Welcome to Herbert Jr. Surface Grinder, Mark II, Part 7. I'm taking the knee off. Hands up if you know what metering valves are. Well, I didn't, but I do now. So whilst I'm waiting for that 20 microfarad capacitor to come, so I can finish the static converter, I can be fitting the hand wheel on here, which raises and lowers the knee. Now the job after that will be to make a new nut for the saddle. And because of that, I won't be fitting the saddle or the table yet. Now this is going to be quite a project in itself. I've said a bit about it before earlier on in the series. This is a 5 TPI on a 5 eighths screw. And it means the minor diameter is something like 11 millimeters. And that's far too small for me to use a threading bar on the lathe, it'll just bend. And it's quite a deep thread relative to the size of the screw. So I'm going to have to make a tap and that will be coming. But let's get this hand wheel back on now. I'm just showing the set mechanism for this big dial. So there's a pin with a point on, a pin with an angle on the end, and a screw, a thumb screw. So the thumb screw pushes this, which impacts on this, which pushes it out of the shaft and onto the inside of this. And that's what locks this to the up down knee shaft. We're getting to that time of year where more often than not light is a problem in here. And it's not made easier by the fact that when I had the solar panels installed, it covered up eight glass roof tiles, which I'd put in, I don't know, when I set up this workshop just a few years ago. So saving the planet isn't free, is it, in that way? But I am really pleased with the solar panels. They're excellent. They just got cheaper and cheaper. Sorry, I don't know that one. Huh. Mute. Alexa, mute. Oh, robots are listening to me all the time. Right, what am I doing? This on next, I think. Get it the right way around. Okay, now the hand wheel. Keys at the bottom here. Hopefully that music wasn't on long enough for the bots to give me a copyright infringement. Tighten that next. Now with a bit of luck putting that in should allow me to lock that dial. Which it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, which it does. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? It's time to test this hand oiler. Now it's empty at the moment. Now why is it empty? Is it going to leak everywhere? I've blanked that off. Knowing my luck it probably will. You can see that better than me I think. Let me know when it starts to fill. Because it's taking forever to run in. It's cold. And it's ISO 220 that I'm putting in. Stand by. Well, we're starting to fill. That's about it, I think. Enough for this test, anyway. Oh! Look, it's taking forever. Look, you pull it out, and then it oils as it pulls back in. So it's slowly moving back in. This is a better shot. Look, prime it, let go. Well, we've got the answer. 
The reason there's no oil in it is because you can't get any oil out of it. The good news is there is a decent feed up to this table that I've blocked off at this side. But the bad news is there's virtually nothing getting to the three oil pipes inside. So one of the oil pipes oils the bevel gears, another one oils this face and another one oils this screw through that real mess of a hole there. And this will be why this nut is kaput. So at this late stage the knee might have to come off. We'll try some shock tactics. Oh! It's worked! At least to some degree anyway, whether all three pipes are clear I do not know. Mm, it's not obvious where this oil is going so we might still be in the same situation. I don't know if there's like a constant pressure valve or something. No, this isn't right. No, not so lucky. It's doing that lock. But I can't see any oil coming out of those pipes. Last night on the internet, I looked for information on this oiler. I couldn't find anything, not even a picture of it. So I don't know where the pipes go inside here. But one possibility is this is connected to the back of the tank, or the back wall of the tank, with a plastic flexible pipe, because that's what they use to connect all the oiling points on this machine. And I'm just wondering if it's not got a kink in it or something like that. As I pull this back, I can see the oil level drop in the tank, but when I let go, the oil level seems to come up again. And I don't see any oil leaking anywhere at all. So, I did have a look inside with this mirror but I couldn't really see any more than I could see just by looking in the hole. But there's no evidence of oil pooling inside this knee that I can find. So this has got to come off and to get the oil out I'm just using a syringe because I don't want to take this off and have oil pouring everywhere. If I have to repaint any parts, you know, it just gives me more work to do. So we'll just suck it out. Can you see that muck? Could be contamination in this tank. The four screws into this are all the same size and they're quite short, so they won't go through this back plate here. So I'm assuming that this has to come off first We've got two screws for the back plate up there. I'm assuming there's two more behind this somewhere. I tried to knock this loose last night. It's stuck pretty well, so I'll have to prise something under it, I think, to get it off. I don't really want to be scratching the back of this pump, but what can you do? Here we go. Right, Whoa. catch the runoff here. Ah, oh, there's, now look, there's a black plastic pipe there. I wonder. Oh, well that doesn't help. There's a piece of paper wrapped over the hole. Look, it's all that about. I don't suppose it would have stopped it working, but we'll see, won't we? Well, that was a good guess, wasn't it? Look, this pipe probably popped off when I hit this plunger with a mallet. Ah, now it all becomes clear. I think what happens is this pump draws up, probably from there, pumps forward, goes to a non-return valve here. You see that recess? That goes over a rubber seal, which I thought was a cap head sticking out too far, and then it pumps it into there, and there's a black tube going from there and out of the tank. So I wonder if that non-return valve here has just got stuck. Well, I've fished out the olive and got it back on the pipe. I'm not convinced that the pipe was far enough through the olive to survive my banging on the end of here, but it was a good fail safe, wasn't it? So that's a non-return valve. And I'm just wondering if it had got stuck. 
I've freed off the bowl. Let's see if it's going to work. So the next thing to do is to see if the pipework is clear and from the front of the reservoir I might be able to blow in an airline or something like that. Well this isn't looking so good after all. If I use an airline, 40 psi perhaps, blow into here, the air comes out of the side connection which goes up to the table so that's fine there's a direct connection there unobstructed that's fine. When I block that off and blow, nothing. So there's definitely a blockage in here somewhere. So now I need to see if I can get it off. Now looking at the design of it, it looks like you've got to take the head off to get the knee off. I've made a short Allen key, one leg, short leg Allen key to get the keeper plate off. Let's see if we can get the gib out. I've loosened this off already so it should. I hope just drop and you can see look I've got the knee strapped around the head well that's a nice hefty gib I don't think there's much chance of breaking that when is a simple job not a simple job answer when I do it none of these are that tight this is going to be slow going though I've just realised, rather than struggling with that keeper plate, I think I can drop it off the bottom. If I measure up here, from there, to the end of the dovetail there, that's 30, it's a foot, near enough it's a foot, 300 mil. And I've just got it here, under that screw. So I think I can get it off that way. Don't know why I didn't think of that. Life's not like that, is it? I've already cracked these off, so I'll get those out, let the strap take the strain, and then I'll lower it down. Hmm. Oh, garbage. <laughs> Will it come off? I don't know if I can get it off the pins. Hold on. Maybe if I pull it at the bottom here, and wind that down. Will that work? Hmm. Uh, Aha! The pins come out. Look. Well, he says. There. Now then. Wish me luck. Hopefully, it doesn't tip forward off the strap. Now it's going to run out of strap shortly. All this work just for a blocked oil pipe. What a nuisance. Don't scratch my paint. That should be it. There we go. We're off. Keep it balanced. Take the strap off. Uh, don't roll away. And up we go. Oh, it's quite heavy. Right, try not to bend the screw as we do it. Hope this is worth it. Here's something to watch for. This is the very long locking screw for the gib. Goes in this side and it has a brass plug on the end which I dropped in, but luckily I could just reach it with these kind of dentist's tweezers. Well, you can see the manifold and all the branches coming off. There's a pipe there that feeds the, what do you call it, saddle screw. And the saddle screw goes away from me towards the front. There's a hole right down the middle of that saddle screw to, for the oil to feed across. There's a pipe going to that point there, but that's blocked off. So I'm guessing there's a gallery that goes to there and there. There's a pipe coming across to here. And that feeds the table. And we know that's clear. So we try to piece this together and figure out what's wrong. 
It's very difficult to show, but this manifold has six branches. There's an input branch to my right, but before it gets to that point, it tees off to the table. The next one goes to here and here. The next one feeds through a thrust bearing that's just under there at the top of the screw. The next one feeds the oils, the bevels. The next one oils this, which is, by the way, loose. And that's the cross, what do you call it, uh, table, sc uh, saddle screw, saddle screw. And then the next one on the very end oils the shaft on the hand wheel that raises the table up and down. So we know the pipes block somewhere to the input to this manifold and you can't get to it. It's an absolute so-and-so. But we've got to undo these two screws. Let's retighten this keep strip before I forget. I'd be guaranteed to if I don't do it now. Ooh. I've got this knee up on blocks. It's just about safe to work on. That'll do. I've got that one off and that one off to give me a bit of flexibility to work. I can't get into the others anyway without taking these screws out. See if I can get across to this side. I can't get to the junction. There's a like a T-piece in further in there that goes to the side connection for the table. I can't get to that anyway with this in place. Spacers look. They would be nice to drop inside, wouldn't they? If I get this over this side and get this one off. Sorry, this is all fumbling fingers, isn't it, for you? That's it, I think. This is the end union where the oil feeds into the manifold. <laughs> Wrong spanner. Last connection. Now please be blocked up somewhere. Every one of these connections is a one-way valve allowing the oil only to come this way and not come back again. This one doesn't have a one-way valve, I don't know why. That's the one that feeds the table screw, uh, saddle screw, and this is the input. Now when I use the airline to blow into there, it comes out of here. It doesn't overcome these, the airline pressure that I've got, because it's blowing past a bit. So this is looking all right. So now I need to look at the T-piece where the feed comes into here and splits off to the table oiler. I really hope I'm not on a wild goose chase here. Each one of these is a non-return valve and there's a non-return valve in there as well. The supply here doesn't have a non-return valve in either there or there. Now theory is if I keep my finger over this hole here, that one over there, I'm hoping we'll see whether this pump will supply through this manifold. Now this lever's going down slowly. Give it a little push perhaps. Now maybe I've just misunderstood this and it, and it just takes a long time. The lever's going down, slowly. Still, we don't see any oil. You know, could this be a case of nothing wrong and I've just wasted a whole afternoon, if not more? This isn't making any sense. So I've had my finger on there to stop the oil coming back into here. The one-way valve here obviously works because we get oil. But after, you know, several goes at this, no dribble of oil has come out of any of these at all, these one-way valves. Now I've checked that the balls inside are free. I haven't um, blown through them with, them with an airline or something. I mean, there is a kind of gauze filter on the top of them. 
and I don't know if that's got blocked or something. This is crazy. I've taken that non-return valve off there, so this is now just an open pipe, so the oil should come out of there without difficulty, shouldn't it? And it does. But it doesn't come out of these. Nuts. Just nuts. Well, this thing begins to give up its secrets. It acts as a one-way valve, a restrictor or a metering device, and a filter. And the way that works is, in this end, there's a diaphragm plate with a spring, which pushes down this way towards this end. The pin goes in. And then you've got this filter screen here, which goes in after the pin. Then these two wads of fibre which go into there and then this presses into the end. Now I removed it with this self-tapping screw. It was just pressed in. And then the olive, when the nut screws on, the olive compresses into the end of this so there's a kind of countersink in there. Now I discovered all of this. Well first of all I took this out and then I took the wads out. I could see that down the hole inside this side here. Didn't know about the pin. Put it into this jar of brake cleaner last night and then wiggled it about for, you know, 10-15 minutes and then this filter screen came out and the pin came out. So whether or not this had become stuck, the pin had become stuck and that was restricting the flow, I don't know. The other thought is maybe the oil I've put in is too thick so I'm going to have to check what oil I should be putting in there. But we'll try this now. It, it does look as if this screen is clear. I'll try and zoom in but I think it's going to lose focus. We'll keep going till it does. Well, I think that screen is clear, look. It'll just lose focus any second now. There it goes. I knew it would. Let's try again. There we are, that's the best I can do. I think that screen is clear. Now that I know it's fully clean, I'm going to try this filter restrictor valve on here without the pin in. See what that does. This is just an experiment and of course there's no proper seat for that olive to land on. It's just a bit of learning, that's all. There it goes. Okay, so we know it goes through. Now we'll put it back together. Right, now with it all back together, let's see. Here are some results. Well, gradually. Oh, it's not, not in a rush, is it? It's not at all in a rush. It's not... Well, that's so confusing. It really is. Well, I hope you've got something from this because I've come to an unfortunate conclusion that I've been completely wasting my time. My friend Tony tells me that the number on the side of these gives the indicated metering flow rate. That's labelled one, that's labelled one, and you can see there's a bit of oil coming out of these two. These just the tiniest drop is forming in this receptacle here and those are labelled zero so that kind of makes sense and then I look at the saddle and the equivalents on the saddle are labelled such as four and five which would indicate a much higher flow rate so I think they've very carefully designed the distribution of oil from this pump and it's the fact that I just didn't have the table connected and I just haven't understood how this is supposed to work well, I have learnt a lot, but I'd rather not have wasted my time, so now I've just got to put it back together. Knee back on, new gasket. Just a few scratches I'm going to have to paint up, but it's not many. Now, is this the right way to do it? Maybe I should put this side on here first, with the screws through. That might be easier. I'll just check that that seal is in place. Yes, it is.
Well, I guess what I've gained from that experience is knowledge, assurance that the knee is okay inside, and a few scratches on the column, which I need to uh, repair, paint again. But otherwise, I don't know. Knowledge isn't free, is it? Well, it's holding pressure. That's been out for 10, 15 minutes. It's fine. 